Pickups, pickups, pickups. It's a pickup life for me. It's a short roof and a long bed. And a place for leaves to lay. Pickups, pickups, pickups. It's a pickups life for me. Now I don't know about you, but I'm gonna have my tools stolen today. Welcome to Car Perva, I'm Johnny Smith. In this episode, I'm in a truck. A Toyota Hilux truck. This is as bare bones as a brand new Hilux gets. Now in its eighth generation. And I haven't been in a truck for a while. And the thing about Hiluxes is their reputation precedes them somewhat. They're known for being indestructible. They're known for being tough old donkeys. And although this only does 0 to 62 in 13 seconds and, you know, it's got a bit curvy over the years, this isn't the star of today's video. The star of today's video is, I, I believe, to be the most infamous Toyota Hilux ever. Now, I could have picked the black Hilux that Marty McFly, Michael J. Fox drives in Back to the Future, but I think this is probably even more infamous than that. And I could have picked the, the one in Top Gear, where, they, where Clarkson tried and failed multiple times to kill, uh, which was a fantastic feature, but it isn't that one. I could have also picked, thinking about it, I've just, just thought of this one, I could have picked the Tamiya radio-controlled Hilux, which is an icon in itself, but it's not that one. No, I'm going to see a friend of mine who's a YouTuber. And when a YouTuber hits the big time, typically they'll be driving around in supercars on payments, you know, Koenigseggs, Aston Martins, AMGs, that kind of thing. But this YouTuber, despite having 10 million subscribers, still has the truck that he bought just before he hit the big time a really abused Hilux. And it's featured in so many massive viewed videos and yet never really been talked about. It's less about this brand new truck, although I have really enjoyed driving this Hilux with its nice balloon tires and its simple black steely wheels. But it's actually about the one I'm going to see. Johnny, it's in here, mate. Oh, you wait there, and I'll get the I'll get the door up. I've been wanting to do this video with Colin for ages because when I first met you, YouTube didn't exist actually. No. But, and I knew you from around the town because of this, yeah, around the town, <laughs> because of this infamous bloody Hilux, which kind of looked the same then as it does now. And that it's, is it's, things have only fell off it. If you're watching this and you've, 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 you've I don't know, you've woken up under a stone, you started as a YouTuber when YouTube started, but you weren't a professional. No one was a professional no. YouTuber, were they? You're a plumber. Yeah, I was a plumber. I still the only thing I'm trained in. So yeah, technically I'm still a plumber. Let's start at the top. Yeah. How many years have you actually had it? 2005 I bought it. 2005, so the year before YouTube. 
Yeah. And I remember you, you always used to have random stuff in the back. Uh, let's go test the jet! All ready for its test? Well, it was mostly full of pallets. Yes. I mean, I suppose to, to start at the end, very beginning, I'd stop beer mixing because I was getting too old and I was getting many kids. Because it's out of week, yeah. I was getting bored of it. I didn't even know. That. Yeah, all my mates of my age were all giving up. So I was kind of like last man standing. Yeah. And it just got to the point where it's like, I've had enough. Doesn't feel that. Like, yeah, you know, I smashed my knee when I was 18 in a competition sort of thing. So I only used to ride flat land. And it just starts to get bored of it. Yeah. You know, when you're just doing it on your own, there's nothing to push you and it's yeah. not the same. Yeah. So I kind of wanted a new challenge. And I just remember going on the internet, dial up back as it was down there, and going on the, the Guinness World Record site and seeing the world record for the biggest bomb fire. Like, of like course you do that. I'll, I'll have a crack at that. And I kind of thought that the thing that I missed from BMX was going out and trying mm. to do something new every night and push yourself. That yeah. I did miss. So I thought, well, if I build a big bomb for that, I've got all this clay and all stuff and built, you know, this heat will grow and grow. And it's like some sort of scalable achievement. So I went and bought this, saw it on the Auto Trader back then. Norwich, got it from, of course. Um, it was the first one I'd gone to look at because they were, they would just sell so quick. You know, there would be very few of them on. It was always, a, I believe, a a Mark II like this or a Mark III. After that, this shape started to go off in my mind. It goes more jelly mold. Yes, yeah. exactly like that. So it was always, it was always this one. Um, so rang the guy up. Yeah, went and had a look at it. Drove it around. Thought, yeah, this is quite cool. It was blue originally, um, okay. and it looked. I think enough, I can see that. Yeah, <laughs> the bits and bobs of it. It does come through the original painter. And I drove it around and I thought it was all right. And nothing compared to it. It was the first one I've gone to see. Yeah. So I bought it, drove it back, and then. It just, from there, it just it took off its own life. I mean, obviously, we went around collecting the bonfire stuff, but it just became the old, it was like the perfect vehicle for me. And so, you'd already made a few little weird videos prior to that, just for your own entertainment. Yeah, the BMX is it's where the two worlds combine, because obviously, you know, we used to film ourselves doing stuff on bikes, yeah. and bits and bobs, and then messing around a little bit. Those CKY videos and stuff, and some of them, uh, like, the, like where Jackass basically began from. Yeah, there was little things like that, and I too, you know, we used to mess around blowing stuff up, having fires, which is where the love of fire was come from. Hence <laughs> the world's biggest bonfire. So as you know, as the internet became a thing, I mean, BMXing give up, you know, that's when it all started to put itself together. But this vehicle is very, very key to all of that. This has been in more viral videos than people realise, because a lot of your videos it features. It does. There was, I mean, the wall of death. So it was kind of instrumental in that, and then that was also the first video which was made with with YouTube in mind. Because before that, it was just messing around, documenting stuff. Yeah, the Wall of Death had a build video, had a test video, and it had a reveal video, sort of thing, all set out. And then from that come various other things. So it just became that it was the do it, the go yeah. for the do it. Yeah, and you know, as anyone will ever know, if you've ever had like an old second hand car, you have way more fun in something that you don't mind if you get a bit of a scratch on it, ding on it, you know, we used to take it off road in, you know, just getting a complete mess with it, getting it stuck, various things. So it just become like this, you know, this member of the family sort of thing. Welcome Sub to the interior, Johnny Smith. <laughs> 
Oh, look at it. Now, if you're wondering, Colin, why have you decided to paint the interior of your truck with red lead, red oxide paint? <laughs> Basically, when I was having a, you know, one of the various little touch-up sessions I was doing, the windscreen was out of it because we let a firework off in here. We had a rocket strapped down here, just let it off. And, uh, and it, it cracked it smashed the, the screen. screen. So I got a new screen, took it out, and I was painting. I did the whole cab and everything like, with, with, with red oxide, and then it started to rain. So I backed it into the garage, but of course the tin was on the roof. It hit the garage door, knocked it over, and then it basically come down, dripped oh. in here, started running down here, filling all this up. There's a hole. You get the drain holes, lots of links in there. That's not that old as well. Big fan, right? Prawn cocktails. Is that the best flavour? It is this, got a bit of bit of thingy. I do yeah. love 80s Japanese switch gear. Yeah, you, this is really weird as well. To take the key out, you have to push that button. That's right. Really strange thing, my, never my, understood my that. Is, um, thingy's that, uh, the figure eight. I don't know if, yeah, that one still works. Oh, though. hang on a minute. See? Oh, yeah. This one's the glow plugs. That one is just because, because. You yeah. need to get the seats upholstered in shirt fabric. That's a good idea, Johnny Smith. So, and then you could have a brown, you could have a brown stripe down the middle, like the tie. So it's your own kind of... Mm, not sure about that. But, <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, all right, okay. It always starts, you just put the, put a battery in, yeah. turn it over, and it will always go. So luxury. That's where they get the term lux, the lux in high luxury. It's well. high luxury. Hey, the... Um, the old Toyota digital clock works. Ah, uh, you say it works. I can tell you now that we have been in the vehicle for four minutes because every time you turn it off and turn it off again, it's one o'clock. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's just a timer. Is it? Yeah, it's a timer. So we've been in this. We've been in this car for four minutes. Can you hear that noise? Yeah. That's the that's the back buck chafing chafing against the cab. So sugar. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> I think, unless there's anything. Yeah, it probably is that. Sometimes bits of grit and stuff get stuck by it. So give me your, give me your top five appearances on Colin Fur's channel of the Hilux. Well, we got fast, fast food. Delivery. We've got the fires. Uh, the wall of death is very centric round it. Uh, the screw tank. Which is the latest one, you know, so it, you know, it has yeah. still been included, it's not yeah. been forgotten about. Uh, probably the world's longest motorbike. Oh, also, I love that one. Yeah. How many videos have you actually done? Two, I think there's about 270. The world's fastest mobility scooter, that, that, was, that was like pure Hilux era.
Yeah, and that's obviously when things started to, you know, started yeah. to take off. Well, and that, was a, that was properly fast. The yeah, one on was, snow. I, I, the one on snow. Yes. Was so funny. It was a, it was so much safer on snow because it doesn't have any grip. It could, oh, it doesn't bite. Yeah, it couldn't bite and flip you <laughs> off. So where's what it? is the most dangerous thing you've driven, ridden? You know, one where you were like, this is. Um, this, is, this is dicey. I don't know if I like it. Yeah, 360 swing, oh. obviously going upside down on something you've made. This is a 360 swing, which means I can go all the way over. Here we go. Get a bit of a whoosh on. Just nip it with my knees. Hang on. <laughs> get in there, get in there. Oh, this is the weird bit. <laughs> Just hanging around, just hanging around the back garden. <laughs> With no straps and whatever, you've always got that. Yeah, they were the shoes, the, the, the electromagnet shoes. Yeah, they, I mean, I did hurt myself on that because I dropped off the ceiling and landed on the bloody battery. Yeah. I mean, there's a, the Dodger. I mean, that did, like, I got 110 out of that oh, of RAF Kaismore. The Dodger was mental. I mean, that was probably my favourite build we've done. Now, BBC Worldwide asked me, Colin first, creator of the hover bike. Jet bicycle, the world's fastest mobility scooter, to create a new ride for the stick. So we took this old piece of junk, we've turned it into this. Now what I've done, I've put a 600cc sports bike engine in this wonderful 1960s Stodgems. But these are all insignificant facts, because all we want to do is see it move. Let's have a go. It worked all right when I drove it. As soon as Stig got in it, brrr, did it? Yeah, and it was like, what? Sort of thing, I'd literally, I'd filmed the first part of the video, like in the morning, I was bombing up and down while they were doing all their risk assessments. Right, right, Colin's just doing his thing. Don't go and see him, yeah. just let him do it. Let him get on with it. Yeah. yeah. And then it comes to the stig bit, we had to put all the safety roll cage on and all that sort of thing. But there is an issue! Stig's covered under BBC insurance policy, so I've had to make him this. This wonderful safety roll hoop thing. It kind of reminds me of something. Anyway. And, um, and then it, the HT leads packed up for some reason. But it was one of those things where it was like, what on earth's gone wrong with it? So then I take it away and come back again. It's all right though, isn't it? I quite like the seating position and the, the little tiny dash. It's good, it's the truck. You've got a living CD player. Oh yeah, it's not, it's not what I do. It's yeah, but you can overlook, oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> There's all these little things. I mean, it's the great thing about old cars is yeah. that people have had them so long that they know what all the problems are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. And so people can read, they read the vehicle. And it's, and it's all, everything's easy to get at in the, in the engine. Are you so, going to keep the paint? Yeah, I'm not going to get rid of the paint. I was going to say, I can't so, the paint. I'm going to clean the steering wheel. Yeah, I mean, I thought about getting it, getting it or making a new steering wheel. Right, where's that bloody hole?
Stoppers up and 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 and I think it was actually registered in October, which is good because it's the month I was born. So, you know, we're very close. How um, much did you buy it? Both? Uh, 1,500 quid. Okay. I mean, it's worth more than that. Well, even sentiment, even, sentiment. Well, I mean, I'd never sell it. Just let you know, it's just probably worked out. I thought, yeah, I was driving at the A1 one day and we was really hungry. And it was like, I didn't have time to stop. And I was just thinking, we don't need to stop. You know, somebody could, if somebody could, if somebody lent out their window and gave me a burger, I, I'd have it. Do you know what I mean? I could do that. <laughs> Sort of thing. So that's where the idea for that came from. Drive through, mate. You got the driver. Fuzzy uncle, fuzzy driver. You'll all be doing it soon, I know it. The idea for that came from, and then, and then the other was was fast, fast fires. I think it called or Uncle Fuzzy's fires, where basically we had the fuel crisis and all the all the petrol stations were running out of fuel. And I was like, if this gets really bad, people are literally going to, you know, like the central eating or whatever might disappear. And they'll have to make a fire. I was like, people can't make fires. You know, we're modern, modern people are pretty useless, really. They can't change a tile. They can't. We'd, we'd never had an how to make a fire. So I had this idea of delivering fires to people that were already lit. They say, it's tea time now, it's getting a bit chilly, so the old phone will be ringing in a minute. It's like, in the back sort of thing, you could see it in the, in the rear view mirror. So I was going along and of course you've now got like the perfect scenario for an epic blaze because you're bombing along at like 40 mile an hour, it's getting all the oxygen it could ever want. <laughs> This is why all, this, all the paints off here all melted. There used to be two lights off these cables, but they melted. So we just got, I don't know if I had a spade or something, but we dragged it out into this lay-by, and then we was flicking water up, up to the truck, because the truck was like steaming, and it was literally like fizzling. It's bubbling. So, so this side's a bit more solid than that side, because I, I took it through for its MOT, and every, of all the MOTs it's had, every single year, the advisory is, Rear bed. Your bed is not very good. It's not very good, but it's always an advisory, so. I just don't understand when you look after it so well. <laughs> I just want to take no, it we'll take it across the field. We'll so it across. might be insured. I think it's insured. I always maintain insurance to keep the no claims bonus up. Of course. Fireworks, you've had some fireworks in it. Yeah, we set 300 fireworks off in the back, but I mean, that didn't do anything to it. Three, two, one. <laughs> Firework stuff is quite bad because the, the, the chemical that fireworks leave over is... It is will it caustic rust, or something? Yeah. The, the big firework Death Star I did with the... Um, well, any of them that have required a metal frame. The day after, they look like this. So, we've got 120 rockets all strapped to this massive wheel. They're all going to go off in sequence. The whole thing will be spinning around. They're all going to blow up on the ground level. Oh! <laughs> Really? Literally, in the morning, it will look like it's been in the sea for 10 years. So whenever we've ever done any firework stuff with it, I've literally brought it back and jet washed it immediately. Tell me, the, tell me if, you, if you've got one, do you have a master plan of... Well, I don't want to make it shiny, because it is, you know, it's cool, but I never want it to be polished and clean, and, and I don't want to get rid of all the dents, because there's no point, because, you know, when I do it up, I still want to use it as the vehicle it is. And it's still the Colin Firth It's still the Colin Firth Hilux, so... But basically, there's you know there's rust holes, there's things that need fixing. I mean, you're gonna make a, you're gonna buy or make a bed for it. I'll just fix that one. I'll do exactly what I've done this side, but just do it to that side. Okay. The only thing is, you see, like things like this was you know trying to match that curve. I just literally just hammered 
I quite like it actually. And hammered it, but I've got English wheels and shrinkers and stretches now from when I built the land speeder. So you're, that was, you're a more experienced fabricator. Well, I've got CNC plasma cutters. Do you know what I mean? I've got a laser cutter. I can cut out all those inner wing things out of material in it, and yeah. it all look proper. I mean, in fact, the tailgate. You should have, you know, they normally, they should have a Hilux embossed. Well, it did. It should be embossed on it, shouldn't it? It's, well, it's, look, it's still written on it. Uh, oh, I, yeah. even, I even tried to fix it back at one point, look, by welding Bit some triangles on. in. But then I thought, oh, this is a stupid idea. And then I just put a bit of plate across the whole thing. <laughs> so once I've done all the body work, is I want to make it a tipper. Oh, so it looks like a standard bed. So it's standard. But like hydraulic or? Yeah, hydraulic. Because I've done a lot of hydraulic stuff now, so I'm like well clued up on that. It's fit a little hydraulic pump under there so you can flick a switch and then the whole thing tips. Because I've thought about making a new bump but out of stainless steel. Because I do so much in stainless with all the pulse jets. What, like the whole... Do the whole thing out of stainless steel. You never have to worry about it going wrong again. It's not the worst idea. No. So, so, and I mean, I've practically you've been staring at... Anyway. You've been staring at your DeLorean too. Well, exactly. You've been half Toyota, half DMC. Now it's not like I'm going to do a magic reveal of the fact that I've brought a new one because it's part behind the camera, which is there. Look at that, look. look how clean it is. It's not done anything, has it? You know, I like Toyota. You never know, it might come to my assistance one day. <laughs> but I think all new pickup trucks look a bit too bubbly. I always think a pickup truck, looks, it wants to look like a fist. Do you know what I mean? Like something like, if you see it in your rear view mirror, you're like, I do not want that to hit me. We're going to go at least now, Right, we're going to be on 19, Blake. Right? And simple, but not on the level of... <laughs> right, what, uh, why, is, why is it not starting? Clutch. Clutch? Oh, man. The technology bewilders you. <laughs> <laughs> I love the look on your face though. That was <laughs> like, why isn't it starting? What have we not done? We're in the new one. We are, aren't we? Now what? What are you beeping at me for now? Is it? Yeah, handbrake's not quite hand on. I mean, that's not tech at all. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> It's kind of weird because I look at this and like, you know, obviously we've got LCDs and we've got all sorts of things in here. It's like, you know, like Jake, my son, is he, when he gets to 25, going to buy an old version of this and go I and do... Cool. Yeah, or go and do what I've done with mine to oh, a certain what? degree. Do you know what I mean? Can it, be, can yeah. it become the same vehicle? God. Basically, yeah. So my very first car was a 1.2 Nova. I had that for a year. Then I bought a 316 BMW. It was one that has been in Stamford for years and I'd seen driving around and always loved it. Yeah. And I saw a for sale sign in it and I just bombed after it on my BMX, caught up with a guy at Morrison's and I was like, oh, you know, I really like the car. And I had that for probably a couple of years and then I got the 325, um, which is not quite the same one I've got at the moment. It was... It's your second it, one. It's the second one because the first one I... It was a... Uh, we were painting the skate park downtown. And somebody rang me up. I'd overslept. I jumped in the back of the Hilux. Well, jumped in the Hilux, backed off my mum's, my mum's garden. I had a fence post in the back of the Hilux, oh, no. and it clipped the the uh, concrete lamp post and just wedged up against the back of the thing and just put it straight over the car. No. And that was it. Wrote it off. Did it smashed all the A pillars in? You see? It bent the A pillar. Yeah. So that was that gone, and so then you wrote your own car off. I know it's, <laughs> it's a stupid story. I don't know why I'm telling people. So you've done that, and I know you've done a another BMW project car. Done the hot tub car, which was the hot tub car. Yeah. But essentially, it went Nova, three one six, three two five, Hilux, other three two five. Yeah. Um, then I mean, I had two vans, I had a transit van, and then the Volkswagen Transporter I've got now. Yeah. Um, the 325 hot tub car was in that. I didn't realise so, you, you'd gone for a 325 convertible. Yeah, I got the worst one I could find because to pull a yeah. decent one to, to bits would be, you know, I, I couldn't do that. Would be you sacrilege. Um, you do have a bit of sympathy, don't you? I do, yeah. I try and, you know, I don't break stuff that's, that's it's not worth breaking. So I did that. And then obviously after the vans and the convertible, got the DeLorean. Um, which has come to the channel, as I'd like to say, and then... That's a keeper, surely. Oh, never, yeah, not getting rid of that. 
And there we are. And who knows? I, I like, you know, I've kind of got into the, the idea of classic cars more now because you don't lose money on them. For the 9 million subscriber special, I actually got an M, a 65 plate M3 to do something as a bit of a bit of a business expense. Oh, I see. And of course, that never happened because of lockdown, so I need to get on with that. Um, I've had a good time editing all that. <laughs> Hello there. You should probably subscribe to Car Further. It's a wonderful channel, but it talks about cars and stuff, just like this one. Hello.